What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. Dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. And I'm James, and we're engaged and like to get scared together. All right, this week we're <laughs> this week we're reviewing a movie that lots of people fairly requested us to review because we did review the first one. Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills from this year. From this year. I feel like we put it off till November because we were a little bit Halloweened out. Mm -hmm. Maybe. (laughs) Well, we saw this movie twice in theaters. We got to see a pretty much (laughs) private screening. There were only like two other people in that small little theater with us when we saw it. Yes. For the first first time. time, yeah. And then we got to uh, awesomely host a screening full of dead meat fans. If any of you were there. Thanks for coming uh, with David Gordon Green doing a little Q&A before the screening with us, yeah. which was awesome. That was super, at City Walk. super nice of him. I didn't realize, I, I just knew we were, I was like, okay, we're hosting this Q&A before screening of Halloween. I somehow missed the part where it was like a dead meat fans thing. Yeah. And I realized how cool <laughs> that was of David Gordon Green to come to that just for you guys. Like, that's so fucking cool. Yeah, we're hoping to be able to do more stuff like that in the future with other new releases. So fingers crossed. Yes. That we was... have enough clout now to do that kind of thing. Yeah, because I think we said this like a podcast episode ago, but it's like win-win for everyone. Yeah. Like you guys all get to see a movie early for free. And we get to interview someone cool. It's great. Yeah. And uh, yes, this is a podcast review because this movie still in theaters. I know it's also streaming, but. That's right. Yeah. It's weird. I think because we both times we saw it, it was before it technically came out. So even after we'd seen it, we couldn't talk about it. Yeah. You know, like when it was still fresh. So Mm -hmm. just saying no kill count until the Blu-ray. Ah, yeah. Still the case. Right. Even though it's streaming, that doesn't change it. Right. Yeah. I heard I feel like those platforms don't look kindly if you rip the entire movie exactly to use it for a YouTube video. (laughs) Netflix is one thing because they don't release physical media. Right. Bastards. But, you know, this one's going to come out on Blu-ray. We'll get it when it does and then then it'll happen. Yeah. So Halloween Halloween kills a very divisive horror movie. Yeah, it is. It really it's I can think of a. A movie that's come out like a horror movie that's come out recently that's been as polarizing i think critic score on rotten tomatoes is around the 40s and i think audience Ooh, score low? is around the 60s oh wow i didn't, I didn't realize it's like in the 40s both of those check out to me yeah. because critically it's it's a mess of a movie yeah it is a bit i mean it's it's hard because it's the second movie that I I think, I think that's, that's the biggest issue. With that it. is the single biggest issue with this movie is that Halloween 2018 was awesome. You just rewatched it this morning in mm-hmm. preparation for this. Uh, I have not rewatched it since the kill count, but I watched my own kill count of it. It's a good little recap. Uh, I I did rewatch Halloween Kills this morning while doing other stuff. Third fucking time watching it, uh, just so we would be prepped for this episode. Halloween 2018. We both loved. Yeah. And this morning, did you also enjoy it watching it today? I think it's so solid. Yeah. And it's a thing where, like, the issue I have with the second one that I don't have with the first one is the first one never feels like it's spinning its wheels. The second one does. That's the problem. Halloween 2018 did great, hugely successful. And so they announced two sequels. And when you do that, it's like, okay. Well, then we know that Michael's not going to die mm-hmm. in this second movie because there's going to be a third one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, does Michael ever really die? Not really. But still, you got to be able to. It just it's such wheel spinning. And we had joked, uh, kind of joked previously about, like, how could this second part of a trilogy end in a way that is still surprising and propels the story forward for a third movie? And we were like, dude. Fucking Connell Cochran. Yeah, I think we pitched this before on the podcast. Even, <laughs> yeah, but I, what I would do is if if I was in charge of the the new Halloween movies is yeah, reveal at the end of this one is Michael Myers mask in the original was a silver shamrock mask and, but then I mean he did murder his sister 
before he acquired yeah the but mask. then you could explain as like he was the perfect test subject then for uh you know someone without qualms of, of murder we could stick this mask on sure, and see to, what happens yeah, some shit like something. that just introduce something new but instead this movie uh, uh, can we do spoilers is it yeah i think what well, yeah i i think we're in the spoiler i feel like most zone. people watching this have seen the movie yeah, lots of people it's been saw in this. theaters long enough and on peacock so yeah. you can watch it. I watched it on Peacock this morning. It's still there. Fucking pause this. Go watch it. Come back. Because we're getting into spoilers right now. Got it? Okay. Evil this movie, dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. <laughs> oh, man. Because uh, this movie just ends. There's nothing new. Yeah, we haven't. I think the most we've learned is that Michael is definitely invincible. David Gordon Green has said that he's not supernatural. That's not what this movie seems to be He gets stabbed in the back. He gets shot and he sits back up. He gets shot and stabbed in like the back of his neck by Judy Greer. Yeah. And then he gets back up and murders everyone. Yeah. And we also <laughs> kind of learn his motivation, if he has any, and it's just he's going home. Yeah. That kind of, like, rewatching the uh, 2018 one, I was keeping an eye out for that through line like okay this idea that it's not about lori it's about he just wants to go home and that tracks with what he's doing in this first one he's never going after lori on purpose yeah. she just happens to be there which, well he's driven there by sartain exactly yeah, he has yeah. no choice like he just ends up where lori is so yeah they have a big kind of showdown but it's not because he was looking for her this whole time but she thinks that he is, you mm -hmm. know, or is afraid that he is. And so in the second movie, she realizes that it's not about her at all because she's in the hospital and is freaking out. I know I don't like the hospital stuff. Big, big bummer because that was my biggest issue with the original Halloween 2 from 1981 mm -hmm. is that Laurie Strode's just in a fucking hospital bed for the whole thing. Yeah. They do the same thing in this one. And I'm fine with her not being in all the scenes and the, the focal point of the whole movie. That's fine because uh, I, I do want to talk about, you know, the strengths of this movie as well. And I think one of the strengths is Haddonfield as a whole and exploring it. And it's, so it's fine for me if Laurie Strode is put on the back burner in this middle movie as we learn about the other people of Haddonfield. But, like, to just have her injured and in a hospital bed, and then she, like, knees that one cop and tears open her stitches and gets back to the hospital bed is just, like, it's a bummer. I want to watch Jamie Lee Curtis do more. Yeah, it's a bummer when she has that scene where she gets up and she grabs that syringe just knowing it's painkillers. And mm -hmm. she's like, I just, you know, I know this will make the pain go away. It kicks ass. And we see that the granddaughter's left her a knife. Um, and just stuff like that where you're like, okay, cool. She's going to just power through and... You know, she's injected herself with enough fucking, I don't know what it is, <laughs> adrenaline to just get her through whatever. But then, yeah, she just ends up back. And, you know, it just feels like a very, um, I don't know. I felt like it got the wind knocked out of it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. How do you want to approach this? Do you want to, like, start from the beginning? or I yeah, guess. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because it starts with, like, a flashback back yeah. to 1978 uh going back to the night that michael myers first attacked and remember that in this timeline everything after the first movie is non-canonical right so, so he's not her brother he's not her brother and he hasn't murdered dozens of people right he's like, murdered five i think uh well in the original film well he murdered like they know or, about yeah like, i'm sorry three. by by halloween kills he's murdered he's murdered more five yeah. plus however many people he murders in halloween 2018 i think y yeah yeah so he's not like some crazed myth mythical supernatural killer that everyone knows about he's this guy who 40 years ago killed a bunch of teenagers and in halloween kills they are learning that he killed the people in halloween 2018 because this takes place immediately after halloween it, it 2018 is i forgot that the the ending of 2018 is them in the back of that truck yep it and just, then it picks up it might as well just be like it could be movie. one long movie you could yeah. just watch it as one long movie for sure you definitely could yeah uh so we're going back to 78 to show what happened and how he got captured and i like that they do this because you know in 2018 they talk about it but the original film ends with loomis shooting him off that balcony He's on the ground, and then he disappears, and that's the end of the movie. And in 2018, it's revealed, oh, he was found that night, 
and imprisoned. And uh, that's where we catch up with him then. So I like that we see a flashback showing how he got caught that night shortly thereafter. Like there was a town-wide search. You had uh, Jim Cummings as a another, uh, cop. A, another cop and a young Frank Hawkins, who was a character in Halloween 2018, who, yes, I put on the kill count. How was I supposed to know that guy didn't survive? Or, yeah, he that, seemed, that guy survived. He seemed real dead. Rewatching it, he seemed extremely dead. So I know. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, we see. And he mentions in Halloween 2018 as well, doesn't he? That he is the reason Michael wasn't killed that night, right? Right. And so we get to see that in this opening scene flashback. And I like the opening scene uh, flashback. I like going back to 78. We also see Lonnie. Uh, yes. Which is interesting because Lonnie is in the first movie, the 1978 Halloween, he's the bully. He he bullies Tommy Doyle. And in this... Get your ass out of there. <laughs> he also gets yelled at by Loomis when he's trying to fuck around with the Myers house. I like how he runs away off the porch. And in this movie, they're talking to adult Lonnie and they're like, yeah, he was the only one brave enough to go inside. And he admits like, I never made it inside. Yeah. Like, and it's it because he was scared away by Loomis yeah. fucking yelling at him. But uh, in... In this flashback, we see that Lonnie is also bullied. So it's like the bully yeah. being bullied, the which is interesting. Cycle of bullying. Exactly. And yeah. you know what's what else is interesting? He's being bullied by a pair of sisters and their brother. Mm-hmm. And they're like, this is what you get for messing with the blank family. I forget what it is. Yeah. My question is, are those other little shit kids in modern... In- in 2018 with the Halloween three masks, are those the same family members? Cause it's another pair of sisters oh, and their brother. Cause maybe. the littlest one's like my sister had the razor blade. I bet it's meant to be the same family. That's my prediction. They're like and, the O'Doyles. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> Doyle rules. Yeah. So my prediction is Halloween ends. will bring back those kids. Cause they were fucking great. They were. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, cause they, they, well, two of them lived. two of them lived. Yeah. Yeah. The brother was, uh, off screen t- decapitated. Yeah. But yeah, in 1978, we see, like, they track down Michael. He's he's in his old house, uh, pops out of the closet, and attacks Jim Cummings with a jump scare. And then we get our first of many, many, many moments of the characters acting real dumb. Char- we have some weird character decisions in this movie, and it makes me sad. It really does, because Frank... The, the first... 2018's pretty good about that. It is. Like, rewatching it, I was like... Yeah, the I mean the only thing I got annoyed at is the doctor mm-hmm. who just all of a sudden is like I'm crazy and puts on Michael's mask <laughs> yeah. and stuff and like whatever. But it's I mean it's kind of silly and fun. I I don't hate it, but this one is like no, there's like logic things so happening. many. And this is the first one. It's Frank Hawkins, even though Michael has his partner right in front of him, Frank Hawkins takes a shot and obviously shoots his fucking partner Jim Cummings. Yeah obviously yeah i do love the is is it when his partner gets shot that michael just like drops him and then turns immediately? and then just walks away That's, very like speed walks away it's yeah. like my favorite bit of physical acting in this movie is michael dropping him and he just looks like a shark here he just drops him and just like his whole body turns like head and everything just mm-hmm. whoop. And then he starts walking, you know, to his next victim. It's so, I don't know, it's, yeah, so, it's so emotionless. And Hawkins is like shooting at him and just missing. And, and then he comes around. And Michael's walking down the stairs. Uh, this Michael was played by Aaron Armstrong, mm. not uh, James Jude Courtney. I think they just needed someone like younger and sprightlier to play yeah, him in 78. Yeah, because you can see like the difference. And I think oh, that's yeah. a cool thing. Because James Jude Courtney is the appropriate age for Michael. He's like 60 something. Yeah, he's fucking scary. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is like, that's a thing I got to hand to this movie. This is like the scariest michael myers it's up there with rob zombie michael myers as far as like the brutality and being like i don't want to run into this guy you're I mean, watching 2018 i was like fuck man this new michael's so scary he like the, the like gas station bathroom mm-hmm. where he drops the teeth over the side of the stall and a lot of that he doesn't even have the mask yet he gets it we, we have we have like a decent amount of michael where he just is has the mechanics uniform and no mask on and even just seeing glimpses of his face is really fucking scary he's just a scary guy yeah james jude courtney michael is one of it's, my favorite he's Michaels. really yeah. yeah for sure so yeah i another do not want to run into this like definitely not a horror villain that i look at and i'm like i could save him he just <laughs> no. needs like a nice hug <laughs> yeah that is and not... i feel that way honestly about, <laughs> about every most. jason <laughs> or every jason i think every jason remake jason Yes, because he has like some, I don't know, I 
I, I just feel like I could fix them. Okay. All right. But not this Michael. No, this because because remake Jason is like clearly moved by something. He's mm-hmm. got some like hang ups. This Michael I is motivated by murder. I yeah. don't. Yeah. Which I like. I, I like, I like it. The, He's a human that. shark. Mm-hmm. Although sharks are great. <laughs> I don't mean to disparage sharks. That's right. Yeah, don't do that again like Jaws did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then in late in subsequent flashbacks, or also starting in this one, we get Loomis showing up. Okay. We thought. When we saw this early as fuck and couldn't talk about this, it was all we could talk about because we were like, how did they do this? We were convinced it was <laughs> a deep fake. We thought it was fake, a deep fake. And it's not. And then we couldn't even ask David Gordon Green about it. And either we, we interviewed him and we did that Q&A, but both of those are before the movie is fucking out so those are spoiler free things and we're just both like okay remember we can't ask about the loomis deep fake so don't do it you know not a deep fake it's not it's just a it's guy just a fucking guy who looks like him and they just Named made Tom him up to Jones look like him Jr. yeah he looks so much like what Donald they say he's like a what does he do actually i forget he's like a, a production designer or a set construction yeah builder he's like or an something. industry dude yeah he's like uh he's but like he a... just looks like dr loomis it's so cool it's so uncanny uh the voice could use a little work i don't know if that's him doing it i because uh, they had the the loomis voice impersonation in the beginning of 2018 yeah i don't think they got that guy back to do this but uh the look is nuts so crazy we thought it was a donald pleasant's deep fake yeah um He's there, and it turns out he was just going to fucking execute Michael, and mm-hmm. Hawkins was like, no, we can't. Uh, and and then in, I think, the last flashback of that, we see Hawkins' uh, supervisor or whatever covering up for his accidental mm, murder yeah. of his partner and saying something like, just because your intentions were good doesn't mean that things work out. And that's right after the inmate is killed, and it's like just really mm. – some of the dialogue in this movie in Halloween Kills – they're making, he's making us all into monsters, that line. It's very on the nose favorite. and very repetitive. Obviously, evil dies evil tonight. Dies tonight. <laughs> I do like the, like, now that we are talking about Loomis, just, like, he, him wanting to kill Michael. Like, he was just going to go out there and shoot him. Mm-hmm. I do like the contrast between him and that Dr. Sartre in 2018. Sartain, yeah. Or Sartrain, because he is all, like, I can't believe people want to kill him. I want to study him. You know, he's mm-hmm. he's Michael's other doctor who is just like completely 180 away from a Loomis where he sees Michael and is like, I want to know more about this. We have to keep him alive for science. Yeah, it paints Loomis in a better light of just like, no, we have to, we yeah, can't. Loomis just realizing, no, 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 no. This yeah. is just pure evil, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the flashback. And then we catch up in uh, modern day with, uh, at the bar, where oh yeah like we are reintroduced to tommy doyle now mm-hmm. played by anthony michael hall and nurse marion chambers once again played by nancy stevens who i like not only played her in the original and halloween 2 but also halloween h20 mm-hmm. where she gets killed in the cold open but since that doesn't exist she's alive again and then just gets killed in this movie That's so great <laughs> and also lindsey wallace played by kyle richards who played her as a little girl in yeah. 1978 she's really good in this i was you know, because I kind of just know her from Real Housewives. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder, like, does she act still? I, I really wasn't sure. And mm-hmm. so I was like, I I genuinely thought it was going to be more of like a, oh, like kind of a cool nod, like a little cameo. But no, she's doing a lot of shit in this movie. And, and she's she really sur- good. survives, And she so survives, Michael. She'll probably yeah. be in Halloween ends. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I was really surprised yeah. by her. Tommy Doyle and Lonnie have been recast because they're kid actors. I think we're just kid actors they didn't go on to be actors uh lonnie is played by richard longstreet who is uh in the haunting of hill house House, yeah and he's mr dudley yeah amazing actor yeah in that series makes me cry he's great here he's i love Lonnie. that's the thing is like the acting is i love lonnie i love lonnie's acting i think that anthony michael hall does the best with what his character Tommy Doyle is given. His his character is given the most overly dramatic lines to have to well, say. Well, yeah, because he's the character that's leading the angry mob. Yeah, and he's got a lot of lines of like, I'm going to find him, going to introduce him to this bat. Night, night. Going to say night, night. And it's like, oof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the problem with this movie is that it's got really funny parts that I appreciate. But when it's trying to be serious, it takes itself too seriously mm. and in in turn comes off as kind of cheesy. Sure. All the mob stuff 
I get that they're trying to do this whole thing where like mob justice can result in, you know, innocent people getting killed. And I understand that, but it's handled so clumsily that it's very, all the hospital scenes, man. The hospital scenes are not, they're just kind of, yeah, you're right. Like it's all kind of messy. And I, I feel like I remembered coming away from this, like not sure what it was trying to say. I mean, I guess it is like a, yeah, mob justice, it makes, you know, it turns everyone into, it, it's similar to like a zombie movie kind of thing yeah. where it's like, we're the villains here. Like the, you know, the bad, the villain is making us into villains or he literally, it's a, it's Hawk, it's a Hawk, no, it's a Hawkins. It's a, who's Brackett that? says, yeah, it's Brackett. he's turned us all into monsters, yeah. which by the way, so glad they got 80, one-year-old Charles Cypher's back to play Lee Brackett. Mm -hmm. He was in the first two movies as Annie's dad, the sheriff, and uh, he's great. He's now like hospital security. Yeah. He gets killed at the end of this, but I'm so glad that this 81-year-old was down to reprise his role from fucking 40 years ago. That's yeah. so cool. That is really, really <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's all just kind of like, I don't know. Like the first one, I felt like it's, what it's kind of saying and doing. Like, it's it's dealing with a bunch of different things, but they all feel really congruent and, if not subtle, just well done. Like, Lori dealing with being afraid of Michael her entire life and never be, being able to live in peace and, like, raising her daughter to be paranoid and her daughter resenting her for it. And, like, there's all this family stuff that's really messy and good. And, like, that scene at the restaurant is heartbreaking. Yeah. And then 2018 also does a lot of, like, nature versus nurture kind of shit, which I guess is always kind of the, the question with Michael. Like, is he just evil or is he... Is there a motive? Like, can he be fixed? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> but they deal with that too and like it all just kind of works whereas this one just felt like <sighs> yeah because like in it this... just it felt like they wanted to make this about mob justice and like wrote for that whereas the, uh, the stuff in 2018 felt a bit more organic like they realized like oh we're getting this really complicated messy story coming out of these characters and it felt so real and so it didn't feel like it was written like let's talk about uh, generation, you know, uh, like women's generational trauma and write characters around that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Halloween Kills, uh, they kind of resort to the mob violence because there's a line from Karen, Judy Greer's character, earlier on about uh, there's a system in place to handle this. Like there's mm. a system in place and obviously we see that the system doesn't always work. We see it in that opening flashback, how they're unable to capture Mike. Well, I mean, I guess they do capture Michael. Yeah, but. I do. I, I honestly, I liked that. Like Judy Greer being like, there's a system for this. And I was excited because I thought that that was something interesting. And I thought that was going to go somewhere really neat. And mm -hmm. it doesn't kind of pursue that really. I guess it's, to show, yes, there's a system in place, and but even when it doesn't work, mob justice isn't the answer because we get the end result of what happened with it. Yeah. Which is fine as a message. I don't know, it's a little messy though. In that bar scene, we are reintroduced to the doctor and nurse who yes. are shown in Halloween 2018 getting into their car. Mm -hmm. And you saw that uh, he, what, he forgets his stethoscope I, again? Yeah, in uh, 2018. They're le you can see them in the background of a shot, and they're leaving to go is to the that bar. Warner? Is that awesome Warner? Yes, it's that. Oh, it's so good. Such a good shot. <laughs> it's so it's so impressive. But yeah, they're getting into their car, and the uh, the is, are they married? They are. It's Vanessa and Marcus. Okay, so yeah, Marcus is dressed up as a doctor, and he's like, "Oh, I forgot my stethoscope," and he has to run back in the house. Just like in this one, he forgets. He thinks he forgets his stethoscope in the bar. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but he had it in his in 2018. He left it in his pocket. I'm so glad they brought up they brought those characters back. And this is like one of the biggest strengths of Halloween Kills is its ex exploration of these side characters of these Haddonfield citizens of making Haddonfield feel like a real town. It's why seeing Sheriff Brackett again is so awesome. Yeah, that guy would still live in Haddonfield 40 mm -hmm. years later. And yeah, he'd get a security job at the hospital, a retired cop. Mm -hmm. Like, that makes sense. And I love seeing this town built out and explored like that. And it's one of the things that, you know, the first time we saw Halloween Kills, I was like, oh, that was pretty good. Very violent, but good. And then with subsequent viewings, I'm like, oh, this movie's really messy. But I still like that aspect of it, the whole Haddonfield side of things yeah and i like too that 
you know, if you watch these two back to back, and I hope the third movie continues with this, you really can map out where all the characters are, even like weird minor characters. You get a sense of like where literally everyone is. It's pretty cool with stuff like characters running by in the background that you then see in the next movie. It's, mm-hmm. it's yeah. really neat. That's the other thing about Halloween Kills is I think we'll be able to judge it fully based on how Halloween ends is. Yeah, I think this is a harder view to do because as much as it's like, oh, it just felt kind of unsatisfying, maybe with the context of all three of them, things in this will make a lot more sense. Hopefully. And will feel a lot more satisfying. I don't think there's any way that Halloween ends can fix the fact that in Halloween 2018, characters seem rational and logical and in this movie they're making stupid decisions yeah i think that that's just uh incongruent but maybe just the plotting and the um you know what everyone in town is doing will be more satisfying based on what happens in halloween ends i hope so anyway because like i don't hate this movie no it's uh what i'd rather watch this i think than quiet place 2 Oh, a hundred percent. I did not like A Quiet Place too. <laughs> I thought I, it You sucked. know, on subsequent viewings, I I liked it more than I did that first time. But I, I I would rather watch this than that. I would just probably fast forward through the the hospital scenes. Yeah. Because those fucking hospital scenes, man. It's them chasing around this dude who escaped with Michael, and he's this inmate who again is in the first. Yeah, I, I was glad I rewatched this. He's in the very beginning. He's one of the guys in the courtyard. And he is holding an umbrella, and they warn the one podcaster to tie her shoes because they say he has a fixation <laughs> for shoelaces or something. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, but he's just, and we see close ups of him because they all, all the other inmates start freaking out when mm-hmm. Michael is like, I mean, he just has to stand there and everyone freaks <laughs> out. So it's revealed that that guy escaped along on the bus mm-hmm. with Michael when it was crashed. Yeah. Due to Sartain's interference, as we learn. Um, This guy is shown on the TV at the bar when they're starting to get alerts about Michael murking all those fucking firefighters, which is a fun sequence. Him destroying them. Holy fuck. It's it's really cool. I don't know why the one firefighter starts spraying him with his hose when he's coming at them. I mean, fire hoses are... I guess they are high pressure and have been they have historically been, yeah. used as a weapon. Yeah. Okay, I, I see that. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. But Michael just murders all of them. No, he can just them. walk through it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when people are getting notifications about that at the bar, on the news, they show this other guy who uh, apparently has a name, according to the Wikipedia oh, entry, really? Lance Tavoli. I don't know. The, the guy who's in the hospital. Who gets chased around, yeah. So they show his picture, and then they rack focus away when it shows Michael's picture. But they don't name or identify the two people. Oh, Because okay. I know that people were like, why did they think he was Michael? They saw him on the news. They only saw their pictures. Although I do agree. How the fuck do you think this guy is Michael Especially Myers? if Michael is like such a famous like famous enough for podcasters to come visit and make like a podcast about Michael. but he's not famous he's this one incident from 40 years ago those podcasters were just like deep in the in the but weeds with if it. you live in haddonfield i think in 2018 they do a good job of establishing how much michael myers lives on in the memory of haddonfield he's someone who yeah people the, have kind the of high heard. school kids are talking about him but like they're unfamiliar with it right they're like oh wasn't she his sister and that's wrong that's and not the, true yeah the yeah they're like no it's that's something people just made up and mm-hmm. blah blah yeah so, so it's, it's a little kind murky of urban legend and then in this one tommy doyle gets up on stage at a talent show and his talent is to tell a story or some shit or if it's an open mic night I, I think it's just this is a small town and it's like a it's just Halloween night at the bar and it's I, whatever it's what you know and <laughs> he's enough of a big townie that they're like oh let's you know he's gonna do this thing yeah I, it it's fine that didn't bug me it, what bug me is there's a ventriloquist there <laughs> yeah no that guy sucks <laughs> that's not that should not be allowed it shouldn't be legal <laughs> but when Tommy Doyle gets up there he says like what some of you were too young to remember or too drunk to care or anything like that so it is murky how much people remember Michael Myers because again in this timeline he's only killed three people 40 years ago that's that's a long time ago and not a huge like murder spree and yet by the end of the movie evil dies tonight fucking mob justice going after him I I kind of believe it you believe that okay yeah people want to join a mob sure yeah 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 they do when we got to do that 
thing at Universal. I was like, that I'm was excited fun. to be part of a townie mob because I don't know what kind of thing would ever get me to join a townie mob, like a Beauty and the Beast style, like <laughs> oh, yeah, kill the beast. mob. We didn't get to use a battering ram, but you know, mm. I don't know. I think people will just join a mob. Sure. You know, uh, the guy Tavoli, sure Tavoli is outside the bar. We don't see him, but they think it's Michael when he takes vanessa's car and yeah. drives off and crashes and then we get our first look at him when he's hiding from them because they're like we're gonna go find michael but when he shows up to the hospital he walks in and we get the first person shot of people like is that him i saw that guy in the news and but he walks in and he's like help me can i get help here it's like clearly it's not mike like michael this guy looks more like danny devito than michael they Myers. all know that michael killed an entire fire department with <laughs> yeah. his bare hands and honestly, I think if that happened real, and again, I, I hate to say like realistically because it's a fucking movie, mm -hmm. the National Guard would be in Haddonfield if a guy <laughs> just killed an entire fire department. Well, this does all take place in one night. So still, I don't know if, how quickly people I don't know, get there, but it but... just seems I just feel like the president is thinking like, do I knew Cadenfield? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's pretty serious, but it's absurd that they see this little fucking guy and are like, that's Michael Myers. And then so we just get all the hospital scenes of this whole this hectic hospital, the most chaotic hospital that's ever it is existed. An extremely chaotic hospital. Fucking people pushing women downstairs and people punching cops and kneeing cops and just ignoring everyone. And then Judy Greer's like off on her own trying to like she finds this guy and she's like, I know it's not you. And her plan to save him is ridiculous. And the, we've hated it since yeah, the first this screening. This is the thing that this is when we talk about like weird decisions made. This is the one that bugs me the most. And seeing it a second time, I was like, OK, I'm curious if maybe something about this, if I'll notice a detail or something will change how I feel about this. And maybe it's not as stupid as I thought. No, it no, makes no sense. Because what happens is Judy Greer finds this guy, French Tavoli, and is like, hey, I know you're not Michael. It's OK. And it is like a sweet moment where she like touches his hand. And yeah. He's clearly really scared. And I'm like, oh, man, I, you just know it's going to get so fucked, though, mm -hmm. because it's such a sweet moment. And she's like, OK, she she brings him to it's like there's like. Uh, an it's area like where, it's where the elevators are. I okay, think. maybe it's a hall with two doors with on two either doors side. Either. So it's like locked. a closed in like area. Mm -hmm. Not, and on either side of those doors are like stairwells, I think, basically. Um, and so what she does is she puts this dude in this area between these two sets of doors. And instead of locking herself in there with him so that she can she'll have so time she can to be explain like to clearly people. it's look at this guy not michael because he's not murdering the fuck out we're of just me hanging right out having a good time he's not a, she leaves him in there by herself and stands outside one set of doors so and that when people come up and then when they run they run past her and she, like she's just standing she there doesn't, she's just kind of like stop like it just it's it doesn't, I hate I It hate sucks. It. I, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't make. And it's just to get to the point where the guy feels like he has no other option than to climb out on the wa the window and then he falls and dies. And it's tragic. It's sad. Uh, I think the the sadness of it is kind of undercut by the gratuitous Ooh, gore yeah, shot it's of a him really gory in shot pieces. Of him, yeah. His arms like above his it looks like something out of Hellraiser. Yeah. Like his face is detached from his body or some shit. Yeah, it's fucked up. But, and like that, it's like a sad thing. And I get the message mob justice will inevitably target innocent people. Yeah. That and then I like think Boston, Boston Bomber stuff. Yeah. And I think after he jumps, I think. Is Tommy still kind of trying to convince himself that it was Michael? Yeah, he's like, well, he always wears a mask. We don't yeah. know what it looks like. And I like that, too. Just the, like, realizing at your core, like, oh, man, this is not the guy. And realizing what that would imply about you as a person. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to maybe somehow, if you just insist, you can change reality somehow. Like, yeah. no, but it actually is him. And I didn't fuck up. Like, that theme is good. And I think the execution of it is lacking and frustrating. Yeah. And it takes away from it. Like, you could do that in a much better way to have it more satisfying than have little squat bald guy running around and people being like, that's definitely Michael definitely Myers. Michael. And then Judy Greer's actions there. By the way, did you learn why she's wearing a Christmas sweater when you watched I, 2018? Okay, so 
2018, I'm realizing at a certain point, I didn't realize she had it on. I was like, oh, fuck, she's got the Christmas. When did she put this on? And I realized I Googled it to make sure there's no like big reason. It's just that she hates Halloween so much. Oh, okay. And they, they kind of talk about it in the first one, but she just hates Halloween so much and what it means to her that um, I was reading an interview with her and she said it was David Gordon Green's idea for her character to just like mentally she skips Halloween and is like, it's Christmas. You okay. Know? So that she makes wear sense. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a funny character detail. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I want to talk to you about our sponsor this week, Keeps. Here's an upsetting fact. Did you know that Halloween H2O is closer to the original Halloween than it is to Halloween Kills? Maybe a lot of you knew that already, but still, I realized that today and it made me feel weird. And maybe if you have memories of Halloween H2O like I do, whether it's seeing it in theaters or just seeing ads for it everywhere, you might be getting to the age where you want to start thinking about hair loss prevention. Two out of three men will experience some some form of hair loss by the time they are 35. And hey, not all of us can rock the bald head like Donald Pleasance. But not to worry, Keeps offers a simple stress-free way to keep your hair. It's all super convenient and low cost. Treatments start at just 10 bucks a month. They even offer both of the only two FDA approved medications that can prevent hair loss. Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered right to you every three months so you don't even have to leave your house, which is good if Michael Myers is running around your neighborhood. You're not safe really if you're in your house either, but discreet packaging, proven results, Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash deadmeat to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash deadmeat to get your first month free. One more time, keeps.com slash deadmeat. Our other sponsor this week is Dad Grass. So something that all the Halloween universes kind of have in common is there's going to be teens running around and they're probably going to be smoking weed. There's even a lot of characters that aren't teens and they're smoking weed too. And I can't help but think all these characters running around high in these new versions must be having so much worse of a time than the people in the 1978 version because weed is just so much stronger now. So if you would still like to partake but keep your wits about you while Michael is running around your neighborhood, Dad Grass is a great solution. I really, really do like this stuff. It's super chill. I keep it in my nightstand. It's really low in THC and very high in CBD. So you get all the good effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. You're not getting any of the paranoia inducing effects of THC. And they're so low key that they are federally legal for anyone ages 21 and over. It'll ship right to your door anywhere in the United States. And maybe this is the way we fix Michael. Maybe Michael could have just smoked some dad grass <laughs> and he'd be a lot more chill. So if you want to try dad grass right now, dad grass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order. When you go to dadgrass.com slash dead meat. One more time. That is dadgrass.com slash dead meat for 20% off your first order. And again, that's dadgrass.com slash dead meat. Uh, so that's the hospital scene, and then they go off to do more mob justice to Michael, but they'll get it right this time. Uh, <laughs> there is a line, though, weird that always stands out to me as weird, is when it's after that guy gets killed by falling off the building, and Judy Greer is kind of reprimanding Tommy Doyle for what happened, and she's like, because of us, an innocent man got killed. And then she's like, well, none of us are innocent. And like just the the way that dialogue is constructed and delivered, it's almost to me like, well, maybe he did some. Fun yeah, stuff. maybe he deserved <laughs> it though. Sure, yeah. <laughs> it's, well, it always stood out to me as kind of weird. In, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> it's like, well, eh, maybe he wasn't he was so no innocent. angel. Yeah, yeah he, he liked shoelaces. That's weird. Yeah, <laughs> he had a shoelace fetish. Uh, okay, so good. We talked about the the hospital shit. That's out of the way because yeah, definitely I don't the even know what else movie. to say about it other than like. It, it sucks. We get stuff with like Lori and Hawkins because mm -hmm. there's stuff with them in 2018 too where it's so funny because she's with, she shows up at, um I forget what crime scene. It's like Sartrain and Hawkins are next to each other and then Lori runs up and do the doctor's like, oh my God, it's Lori. Holy shit. And he's like, yo, Lori, this is Hawkins. Did you know he's the reason Michael's not dead? And it's such an <laughs> awkward thing. Um, But I like that we get more stuff with those two. Because in 2018, 
once we hear that Lori was thrice married, like the podcasters mentioned that. Yeah. And then later when Hawkins and her are together, they hint towards a past relationship. And I remember us being like, I wonder if he was one of her husbands. Turns out he wasn't, but in Halloween Kills, they do talk about like, they went on one date, they kissed, he mm -hmm. hoped it would become more. And I like that fleshing out of their past. Yeah. But I gotta say, I, I can't really love scenes of these two just laying in hospital beds no. talking. And especially because there's, uh, for whatever reason in this movie, they like to keep from the characters that Michael died. Like, it's a it's a fact that is revealed to characters repeatedly throughout the movie. And it makes sense the first time when Judy Greer's like, well, he killed my husband, but we got him. Or wait, and do you mean that Michael survived? Yes. Did I yeah, say Michael he said died? died yeah. I'm sorry. That Michael survived. Yeah. And it makes sense the first time when Judy Greer is talking to the sheriff, who again is not given enough stuff to do. I right. That sheriff, Sheriff Barker, I think. Omar Dorsey is the he actor. He better name. get some cool fucking shit to Give do him some cool shit one. to do in Halloween ends. Look that at guy his looks outfit. awesome. Yeah. What are we doing? He's got a cowboy hat. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, but when she's like, oh, it's, oh, at least we got him and he can't hurt anyone else. Oh, I'm sorry. No one told you. And then it does that whip panta. Uh, like, what? And be like, what? Uh, that makes sense. But then like Judy Greer withholds it from Lori and there, and she tells Frank that he's I dead. I get that she, I get why she withholds it from Lori. Yeah. I just get sick of hearing over and over like characters learning that Michael survived, I yeah. guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, those are the hospital scenes. I will say also, another thing I really like about this movie is that finally acknowledgement of Ray's death, because that was one of the things I had an issue with at 2018 is Judy Greer's husband and uh, Allison's dad yeah. gets killed and there's no acknowledgement of it. Finally, in this movie, they are dealing with it and yeah. like talking about it. And Allison's in the car with Lonnie and she's like, oh, you knew my dad? And he says that uh, her dad used to get him drugs, which is a nice, like they both have their own versions of the story because in 2018 mm -hmm. at I the dinner scene. I wrote that down. Yeah. He says, Lonnie sold me peyote. <laughs> yeah, so they've done peyote together. Who got it? That's up for debate, apparently. I, yeah, I liked that touch too. <laughs> mm -hmm, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I know it's the the dad is such a. I can't remember now. I can't even remember if they realize in 2018 that he's dead, or I think they're just focusing on trying to fucking survive. Someone finds his body. I think it might be Lori finds his body in the closet. Lori does, yeah. and so she that's must right. have told them okay. that he died. Or and does his body wind up on the? I don't know. They know that he's dead, obviously, yeah, by this yeah. point. Uh, but yeah, so I like that acknowledgement and that's another strength of Halloween Kills. Another strength, I think the biggest strength and my favorite and characters. And the smallest strength. And the, and the littlest strength. Yeah. Big John and Little Big John, John and baby. Little John. Oh I love, man. I love these two. It's, I'll, I'll say before we, we talk about them that I, I know that some people do not like these characters because I've seen people say, and this is not my place to, to call this one way or the other, but some people thought that they were a bit like stereotypical because, and I personally, I did not think that this is what their names meant, but <laughs> someone thought that Big John and Little, it's like nicknames, it's like dick nicknames. I don't think so. I thought they- They're both named John. I one of them's a bigger guy, one of them's skinny. And it's, they're like the inverse too. No, right? see, no, no, Big John is the bigger guy. Oh, see, I read it as it's fun. Big John is the shorter one and Little John is the taller No, I think one. it's like, it's like width oh. instead of height. Sure. Because Michael McDonald's a very thin man. Yeah. And uh, uh, the other guy who was in, oh yeah, Scott MacArthur, who was great in The Mick, and I've heard he's great in Righteous Gemstones, which I'd love to watch sometime. I know, yeah. He is, is a uh, portlier fellow in just a little bit, but compared to Michael McDonald. So it's Big John, Little John. Oh, I uh, see. I also don't find them stereotypical at all. I, I would say maybe the one thing that I could see a complaint is that I, uh, I believe both those actors are straight. Playing it, but like, oh, are they? I'm assuming, but like, I don't know. I think it's cool to have this gay couple who love each other, and I don't find them stereotypical because yeah. they're just people. But again, it's not. It's not. We ours. can't say that we're like. Sure. It's not. So therefore, they're not a stereotype. Yeah, but in my opinion, I'm saying that I, I'm acknowledging that yes, I've seen those kind of critiques of those characters. I think before. they are two characters who happen to be gay. And I that think is that my opinion. I. Are, like on my both of my viewings of this, I have found them like really sweet and like they're great, like a like a nice couple. They're and they're I like protective that they're of each other and and you 
Another thing I like about these movies is the way that the set decoration, the way that the insides of all the houses really tell you a ton about who lives there. Mm -hmm. And like their house compared to the insides of all the other houses that we see, because they are also realtors. We see their picture on a bench. It's not mentioned, but no, yeah, in it's, the it's out of focus in the background. It's, it's like Big John and Little so John, funny. realtors. And my, my pet theory is that they are the realtors in town who couldn't sell the Michael Myers house because the murder took place there. So they just so they decided just to live in. there. Yeah, since I they love that. Sell it. And they're, the way that they've decorated the inside does not match at all what this house kind of looks like. We were just talking to uh, our friend Beth about like home decor and how it's weird because if you have a house that like looks a certain way some interior styles just look like looks bizarre it looks like you're kind of forcing it's kind of like it. With the nightmare house the, yeah that's how the, the nightmare house looks to me it. the yeah. outside is very like traditional and kind of like like it's like colonial style and the inside is like really modern mm -hmm. now and it, it just doesn't work for me but it, that's how this feel this feels like they've they dream of bigger things yeah. and they dream of maybe a more sleek modern house and they've tried as hard as they can to make it look like that. Well, it also makes sense with like the, the snacks they're prepping. It's like a charcuterie. A little charcuterie. Yeah, like they're, charcuterie. Yeah, they're classy guy. I feel like they, they I think they <laughs> the think robe. maybe they're a bit uh, better than uh, the, the, the small Hanfield, town yeah. they're, they're in. Yeah. I just, I fucking love them. The editing on Big John's dancing to that awesome Halloween yes. song, which I played repeatedly at our party. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's so great. Yeah. And uh, and like, it's fucking, so like, it's not, <laughs> I would, I would maybe see arguments for those characters being, you know, a bit of like a, a not nice joke if their deaths were played to be funny, which they're not. They're not. They're, they're some of the most awful deaths to they're watch. They're horrifying, just like with the deaths of the um, grave or the cemetery caretaker woman and her husband. Yeah. Which take place a little earlier. And I, I, we can talk about all these people together because it's the same thing. I love them instantly. She's flying a drone. Her husband's complaining about he how, has a CPAP mask. The, yeah, and yeah. how it smells like cigarette smoke because her mom used it. And that guy, I guess, is in Rescue Me, uh, which makes sense. He's just, just from seeing him here, it's like, oh, that's a Boston guy. Mm -hmm. And he's so funny. And their little scene together is hilarious. And I immediately care about them. And then they're killed in the most brutal way. They're like, the I think, the hardest death to watch yeah and that. it's also frustrating because again it's another stupid character decision he gets m maimed and she's about to leave the door and then michael walks in and she's just like too scared to open the door and run and she like grabs a knife but wait why is it stupid because she could have just left oh i didn't realize there's she's like opening the door and then michael walks in and she's like Ah, she like stops trying to open the door oh. and like grabs a knife, but then just stands there scared while he takes out the fluorescent light bulb. <sighs> Holy shit. Stabs yeah. her in the throat. And then, yeah, she's just sitting there. She's still alive. Bleeding out slowly while her husband gets stabbed in the back Dude, a bunch. Dude, he just, he's decorating him like a birthday cake with all these fucking knives. Yeah. Like the husband's on this table and Michael just turns around, grabs a knife, stab, grabs another one, stab. Like he goes through the whole fucking knife drawer. It's so it's brutal. Crazy. So with their death. And then the very last knife he walks towards mm -hmm. her. Well, he doesn't even use it. I think he just likes it and takes it to use later. Oh, and I thought he was No, gonna... she just bleeds out to death. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But oh. again, with their deaths and with the Johns' deaths, it's like, it's really tragic and yeah. sad because you you like these people. You you see that they're good people. They're they, funny. I mean, it's continuing the trend of 2018. I feel like the only characters that doesn't apply to are the fucking podcasters. podcasters yeah, because <laughs> they're like meddling. Fuck podcasters, you know? yeah. And they're also <laughs> like, they seem a bit exploitative yeah and where they're just like Lori, we want to give you this opportunity to like come to terms with michael and it just all feels very gross especially and, the guy and his narration and that's what in I mean the cemetery too, is like the 2018 does a bunch of different things like there is this commentary on true crime podcasts mm -hmm. and how invasive that is and like this exploitation of small towns with like fucked up histories you know for your own gain and like that's a cool thing that i think is handled well in that movie um yeah i don't know but those are the two characters that you're like you're not like in love with them or anything. Yeah, they their deaths are really gruesome. But in 2018, there's also the like the babysitter and Julian. They're great. Fantastic. Where she comes up to because he's 
scared and sees Michael and it's like there's someone in the closet. So she goes to check and there's this whole thing where she's teasing him about like, you know what, you were my favorite kid. I used to babysit, but now you're like number 10. And then when she finally tucks him in, she pokes her head back in and is like, I was kidding. Like, you're my favorite. And they're so cute. And, and I like that. And she a- di- I mean, she dies defending him mm-hmm. from Michael. And I like that Julian uh, survives that movie and gets a little <laughs> yeah. cameo and kills where he's on the news and he says she was my number one favorite babysitter. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Couldn't show too much of him because I'm sure that kid looks way older yeah. than he did in that movie since it's like two or three years later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, big john little john it's dumb that they split up to check their house and, and also the fact that this is one where i was like why are you still in your house just leave that yeah i mean i understand wanting to defend their house they don't know it's michael that's true i guess if you don't i'm just trying to think like realistically i guess if you're you know realistically if someone's in your house it's not michael yeah, <laughs> you exactly. know, they're, they're not like a fucking maybe supernatural serial killer but I still, I don't know if I would want to be going upstairs. Maybe just call the cops and leave. Yeah. Big John gets his eyes gouged out. It's horrific. Yeah. And then and then little John finds Big John and sees Michael standing there and just stands there and is like, Michael, Michael, you came home. Yeah. And just stands there while he gets killed. It's like, oh, man. It's between that and then at the end when Judy Greer attacks Michael with mm. the pitchfork. And then just throws the pitchfork down and like kicks him instead of doing it, like stabbing him more or shooting him. It's just so many moments that are dumb character decisions. Yeah. They're so frustrating. And then so what? Okay, so yeah, Michael, you've come home. So what? The whole thing is Michael, all he wanted to do is just get to his room so he can stare out the window again. And it's I do, I do like the reveal that. Because in the beginning, they're like, what, what is he staring at? And they're like, I don't know, just Haddonfield? Yeah, a town where nothing happens. Nothing, and but, then Jim Cummings stands up there and is like, Haddonfield, the town that nothing happens. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I do like the reveal that, no, it's not the town he's staring at. He just sees, like, his own. It's just him staring into, like, his own black Reflection. eyes. Yeah, it's the creepy. Eyes. I like that. Mm-hmm. That kind of, that shot. And, um, but I don't know. If, if that's the case, then, if he has to be standing in that window... I I can't even say I thought of this. I think I saw a tweet, but someone's like, "Why don't we just send the house to space, <laughs> or just like <laughs> just or just let let him stand there? Like if that's what he wants, and he's not gonna leave that spot, just let just like cordon off the house, like you know, just keep him in there." Yeah, because after he gets there, he's in there mm-hmm. until uh, you know they lure him out. So that's what I'm curious of. Like, just leave him in the house. I'm just curious what the just next movie <laughs> does if that's his whole thing. Is like if, if that know, was his man. end goal is to come home and go to his little spot, his little <laughs> safe space. <laughs> what do we do next movie? Well, the thing is, Halloween ends. I I've heard will take place years later. Oh, it will. So you know, Halloween Kills takes place the same night as Halloween 2018. The next one takes place like years later. So he's still gonna be standing there. I didn't, I don't know, man. What if he's like a little um, little tourist attraction? Oh, yeah, just come and see him standing there in the window. You could come like, look at him. And... With Judy Greer's body just fucking rotting at his feet. <laughs> yeah, Because uh, he kills her at the end of and, this. And... Uh, Lonnie and yeah, Lonnie Elam yeah, and Cameron Elam yeah, who uh, yeah, his his character is in 2018, obviously kind of a douche in that movie, and then it kind of, she leaves him at the dance, and that's the last we see of him. Mm-hmm. And I like that he, it's a loose end that comes back in this movie, and he gets his redemption in this. He movie. does, yeah. I really like him, and it helps that that actor's in you, which we just watched. <laughs> Guys, okay, we I I do eventually. It would sucks because we would have to like rewatch all of it. Although it wouldn't suck that much. This would be time consuming. James and I love love you on Netflix. That show is fucking awesome. I think it would totally work for this. It counts as horror enough. <laughs> for the podcast. For the podcast, we can get away with it. But we love that show. And yeah, we didn't even realize that was the same actor. Yeah, Dylan Arnold. Yeah. Uh, I think he's great. He's After great. After having seen him in two very different things and playing kind of different characters. I think so. Yeah. They it, have different. They're both like horny boyfriends, but they're like different brands of horny God, boyfriends. He's so horny in you. Yeah, you is like, dude. He's detrimentally horny. Yeah, it's like ru- it's like ruining his life. Uh, this is just he. It, although it's not even like he. It, it's a it's an unfortunate thing where clearly this other girl is like hitting on, and she just she like just goes for it and kisses him, and he's kind of like I think he just is, doesn't even know what to do. And he's been drinking, right? And he, yeah, so, so I think he just it, is yeah. kind of 
uh, taken aback. Mm -hmm. And then he throws her phone into the tubby custard <laughs> <laughs> in that punch bowl. You, yeah. No, it's uh, nacho cheese, I think, was the final reveal. No, it was of nacho what it is. cheese. I think it's nacho cheese. How did sitting you find out? In the out? Open. I forget, man. In my research, I think I saw that it in was nacho. In a punch bowl? In a I don't know. Ew. What else would we be, should, though? That's what fucking we, yogurt? Dude, that's what we should have asked David Gordon Green. Oh, dude, we should have. That we know, we actually should have. We'll what ask him next time we talk to him. What wrong with us? Because he did Asking say, us things about, like, oh, what films inspire you? No, we should have asked what's in the punch bowl that looks like tubby custard. It's I'm pretty sure it's nacho cheese. <laughs> Which makes, doesn't make a whole lot more no, sense. No, it's but. just, like, why is it in a punch bowl? I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, God. that's gross. Uh, the Michael Hunt is another thing going on. And we got Vanessa and Martin joining forces with Nurse Chambers and uh, uh, Tommy Doyle and Lindsey Wallace. And they're out hunting for him. They are telling the town to get inside. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Mm -hmm. They find those shitbird kids on the playground. <laughs> yeah. In another scene that just makes me love those kids. Those it's kids feel like <laughs> how I feel talking to. Like, that's how I feel. Um being a internet person above the age of 30 like the fact that we do stuff on youtube and we're over 30 we're so we're we suck like we're so old and out of it and i'm scared of kids and i have a feeling that this scene and those characters are written with the same kind of anxiety of like kids think that i'm like nothing phases them you know mm -hmm. yeah they're like oh he's standing over there playing peekaboo like they're, it's so funny yeah uh, i love them <laughs> and so then we have this scene with this attack and you know Lindsay is kind of dispatched of so that michael can go fuck with the people in the car which is vanessa martin and nurse chambers mm -hmm. and he's like on the roof of the car they're really unsure what to do vanessa climbs out the window and starts to get away um it's it's a mess choreography wise i don't mind it so much i mean what do you do if he's on the top of the car well what's Weird is that Vanessa is able to get out through the window and run away, and it takes her a minute. And so, what's Michael doing there? And then uh, nobody else bothers to like open the doors and get out. They're like too afraid to get out. I don't know. There's just inconsistency there. It's sad to me when Marion gets stabbed and killed yeah. by Michael when he gets in there. And then I like that um, Martin tries to is Martin right? Uh, Marcus. Marcus. Yes, Marcus tries to strangle him with the stethoscope. Yeah, he tries. Like that's cool. Yeah. And then that stab to the eye with the knife is brutal. It's so brutal. Yeah. Also, the thing I want to point out about Marcus because mm -hmm. I at first I had this thought. I'm like, oh my god, why do you care so much about the fucking stethoscope? I'm like, why are you going to get it when you like? There's maybe someone job. in your car. Yeah, it's part of his job. And like though that it has to be like his real stethoscope yeah. from work. Like it's not his it's Halloween. Not a prop. <laughs> yeah. That's what I realized. Like, oh no, that's like medical equipment. He's you know probably got to go back and get that. Which is also why it works as a possible strangulation mm -hmm. tool because it is like a real stethoscope. And then Vanessa, who has taken the gun because she says that she can use it better than her husband, starts shooting at Michael. And this has been a hot thing online. Oh, yeah. People posting this online. And people saying that... Um, so, so she starts firing at Michael. She misses. One of her shots goes through the windshield towards the driver's side. So it's not too far off. And she continues to fire at him while getting closer, I imagine, to have better shots. So yeah. that, you know, so she can so she better doesn't hit also, him. She doesn't realize her husband's dead. Uh, right? We don't know. I don't know if she saw him get I don't stabbed know if through she the knows, car but window. Like, I'm, I'm imagining in the scene she doesn't. Okay. In so, any case, she is approaching Michael, yeah. shooting at him, um, getting closer to have better shots. And then the last shot, she, she does one-handed, but she's gotten so close that Michael's able to kick the door and it pushes the hand, like her hand back and she shoots herself in the oh, head. It's I, so like, it's people, you, you were saying people find it funny, right? Yeah, I have seen people group this, her actions here with all the other dumb character decisions. Oh, I disagree. Completely. I disagree. And, and people making fun of her for saying that she could shoot a gun and then not being able to shoot Michael here. Uh, okay, it's, it's, I feel like people all think that they're fucking sharpshooters. And <laughs> I feel like if a character is like, no, I know how to use the gun, that doesn't mean like they're a fucking sniper and are gonna be able to just from a distance shoot someone. It means they know how to operate a gun and have maybe shot some targets before yeah. or something, you know? like. But, and then yes, people have said that her shooting herself in the head 
was hilarious and like the theater laughed and that it and like I found it a really tragic I thought upsetting it was death. really sad because I like those characters and like and I'm not saying that you know liking characters doesn't mean like a death can never be funny yeah. like that's clearly I mean so much of horror is like death being funny and I think that's something I like about horror but this the context of this it's like it's just tragic and it also to me is a moment where I'm like man Michael's scary, you know? Michael can, like, look at a situation and the inside of his brain is just, like, <laughs> like he's a fucking robot or something. And it's he he's like an algorithm calculating the best way to kill someone at any given second. And that moment was like, oh, if I kick the door open, this is what's going to happen. It's like he's scary smart. Yeah. And I don't know. I thought it was just... I didn't think it was funny. It, it's, I'm not goes, saying you're a bad person if you thought it was funny, but I just think it's weird how that reads so different. Because I group people. it just alongside the other kills that we were talking about. Big John, Little John, yeah. uh, the the other couple that are killed. Like, this is a sad thing to me. These characters are fighting for their lives, for their town. They're trying their best. And, like, she was trying to get close enough to shoot him, and yeah. she got too close and, and ended up shooting herself. It's really tragic to me. And so it's just weird to me that people are like, ha-ha, this... Uh, this idiot fucking tried to shoot Michael and couldn't shot herself. It was hilarious. Yeah. I'm like, I, that's, I don't know, I find that messed up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just don't think that character who's, I don't know. I don't know what people expect when a character is like, I know how to use a gun. It's like, that doesn't mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I but, really, yeah. you know, I mean, t uh, tell me why I'm wrong, I guess, because a, a lot of people... <laughs> thought it was hilarious yeah i don't know i just thought it was <laughs> bummer i don't know if it would if it played quite as because it like both their deaths aren't like the slow death where one of them is just watching their partner get killed it wasn't quite that level to me but it still was like oh fuck yeah <laughs> you know like it's, it's just i, I like those them. characters so yeah. much that it it was sad to see him go uh lindsey wallace Fights back with a bag of bricks right there. Yeah. Fucks up Michael a bit, runs away, hides from him like she's a hobbit. And he's a dead Okay. Guy. It's the exact both same shot. Like, the, both times we saw this, we <laughs> both were laughing to ourselves at this scene because it's framed exactly like fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Don't, tell, don't even tell me they're like, they, I, I feel we like. We should have asked David Gordon Green about that. Like, fuck, okay. There's a shot in this Let's movie that reminded of us of Lord of the Rings. Was that intentional? Yeah. And he'd either be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Or you got you it. You got it. That's my little joke. But yeah, there, it's like she's hiding next to this river by a bridge and she's up. It It's like the same kind of tree even where like the roots are kind of sticking out along <laughs> yeah. the bank and she's like, I swear there's like fog coming out of her mouth, you know, like the, the foggy breath and Michael's up there. It's like the fucking Nazgul. It looks when just like the it, The yeah. hobbits are hiding after Mary and Pippin decide to go fucking get some mushrooms, yeah, you know? Man. Shrooms are shrooms. Yeah. It just, it's framed the same. I don't know. Yeah. Then he, he leaves. He doesn't find her and leaves. But then next time they find her, she's like struggling. To, I don't know if she wore herself out hiding from him or what. Yeah. I, I forget know. if she got injured at all. Uh, I mean, he was fucking around with her during their fight. I think it was strangling her before she started yeah. to pull his mask off. I never off. have too many issues with something with, like in an instance like this, because I can totally believe that someone would be like, able to run and hide in a situation and when their adrenaline wears off like oh man i'm so injured i mean she's injured to the point of she's out of the movie she goes to the hospital and yeah she's just out of commission yeah saving her so that she can be in the next one yeah uh because bracket and tommy join the mob uh at the end but first yeah elam or uh the elams lonnie and cameron and allison they get their asses out there. <laughs> Well, they get to the Myers house. Oh, this is a dumb thing, too. And Lonnie's like, yeah. you kids stay here. I'm going in by myself instead so of... So why'd he even bring the kids? I don't know. I can understand getting caught up in the moment. Like, yeah, me and these kids are going to find Michael. And then when you get there, the reality of it, like, eh, maybe kids, you stay you here. You here, but sure. But also maybe Lonnie wait for the rest of the mob that's out hunting Michael instead of going into that Do house they by know yourself. that there's a mob? They know there's a fucking mob out here fighting Michael. They've all been chanting evil dies tonight. Yeah. Everyone's in on it. Or like, go get more you know bring more backup <laughs> yeah instead he just goes in and uh i'm guessing my dull machete is he gets killed off screen and body shoved in an attic yeah he does because find. it just it takes him a little bit too long and they're like let's maybe go check on him mm -hmm. and then they do 
Yeah, this whole thing bugged me. Yeah, they find the Johns' bodies uh, <laughs> replicated in a photo that they have. Like Michael, Michael, Michael's a little son of a bitch because wait, they what? Th there's we see a picture of them in their house where little John's head is in Big John's lap, and it's like it's almost like an engagement oh, picture why or something. Why the fuck didn't I notice that? And then Michael arranges their bodies in that way. I think he reverse, does do that. I think with Big, yeah, but he he does that. He'll fuck he around. Re with bodies. He fucking recreates. Uh, murders from his original murder spree in uh, Halloween 2018, like with the pumpkin and the aquarium, and oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, the ghost sheet and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, he'll, yeah, he's got a, his sixth sense of humor. He I definitely guess. is a little bit of an artist, I think. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, he then... just need, he just should have had arts and crafts time in jail. Maybe that's what could have fixed him. This because the place he's in, this facility, seems like one of those like really high security places where it's basically torture every day because they give you like no stimuli mm -hmm. and you're just kind of in a box. Yeah, and they're evil places. <laughs> and I think maybe he just needed maybe some books and some crayons. It's sounding like you're saying you could fix this Michael Myers, honey. Maybe I could fix Michael Myers. No, I no, think, I no, think when he, no, no, I think when he escapes, it's fucked. Like, you're not getting him <laughs> back in there. But like, while he's in there and you're his doctor, and instead of being like, hey, maybe I can release him and what, and observe him as he goes on a murder spree, give him some like, Coloring I don't know, books? finger paint. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, clearly creative. They they find him. They find the Johns' bodies, and then like, Allison goes and takes the knife out, and she's just hanging out by these corpses for a while, while Cameron goes off on his own yeah. and finds Michael, and then gets attacked and fucking murdered. His death is real upsetting too. His head is like shoved between the banisters. There's like five times where I'm like, okay, now he's dead. Yeah. Oh no, Cameron, he's still alive. Sure. So, oh fuck. And then he just keeps. And then the final is like a head twist. twist head, yeah. yeah, poor Cameron. Mm -hmm. uh, Allison hurts her leg getting thrown down the stairs. And then for some reason when Michael's about to stab her, she's like, do it, do it. She goes all nuts. I, yeah. I wonder, because there was a thing recently where Jamie Lee Curtis said Halloween ends is going to piss everyone off. Ooh. And people are like, what's that going to be? And it could just be her trolling she's definitely the type to maybe just be fucking around with people <laughs> yeah. but i wonder if it's uh if people i've seen theories such as michael talking michael Ooh. killing Lori, which i feel would be the most obvious one allison becoming a killer because they i mean halloween 2018 ends with like the shot of her holding the knife or something it's like a weird yeah well the i feel like I, I noticed that this time, and I was in because it, it literally ends. It's like a freeze frame, and she's holding the knife. But mm -hmm. all I thought was, oh, that's setting up the fact that she has the knife in the hospital and wraps it up and like leaves it for Lori. Sure, I think that that's all that is. Well, it I would, think I think it was hinted at of like, did this did this fuck up Allison enough to become? Because they've always played with that in the the series. Remember when? Danielle Harris uh, yeah. was going to be a killer at the end of part five, right. and then they just abandoned that, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. It would For me, that would feel really... Would it piss you off? It would piss me off, I guess. It might be the case. Just why, though? Yeah, I don't know. Ask David next time we talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, she's saying, do it, do it. But she do could it. also be talking to her mom, who is now behind Michael with a pitchfork, Chekhov's pitchfork, it gets mentioned a few times earlier. Like, Big John is like, next time, I'm coming af after you with a pitchfork. After they were like, uh, they think those kids are fucking with them still. Mm -hmm. I love how those kids like, th those scenes are fun. Yeah. But uh, Judy Greer stabs Michael in the back with a pitchfork, gets him down. Instead of killing him, takes his mask and taunts him and makes him chase her through the streets. Well, I mean... That I think she's thinking, I know this mob's coming, so like there's your guarantee that he's dead if she can lead him to a mob that but has But another guns guarantee and stuff. would be when he's down on the ground and she has a pitchfork, she could just keep stabbing him with that pitchfork like in his head. It's real dumb. But it's, I don't know, I just, he's so strong. What if he, you know, grabs it while I'm trying to stab Maybe. him? Maybe. They've also got guns around. I don't know. That's what I mean is like she knows the mob has guns and all kinds of shit. <laughs> Do they? And a truck. Because they just beat him with hockey sticks and shit. Yeah. I think Sheriff Bra or not Sheriff, I think Brackett has a gun. Yeah. But like Tommy Doyle is like, we're going to go kill evil with this baseball bat. Yeah. Who he gets by from the bartender, who is another little minor character who I fucking love. I love that guy. Like that guy is so great. And we get a little bit I, of history where he's talking about his grandpa opening the bar. Dude, like that's what I fucking love about I 100% believe that that's the guy who, when you're 
living in Haddonfield. You're a sad townie. You go there and you tell him all your problems. Yeah. There's a lot of just like, just cute townie <laughs> there's like a guy in like a crown and a cape or something like yeah. this old like gaunt guy yeah i don't know it's great yeah uh yeah so she leads michael he <laughs> it would have sucked if she had his mask and was like come on michael and if he just closed that door and murdered allison instead. oh my god right no he wants the mask <laughs> yeah so he chases her through the streets until uh he's cornered in a trap another gotcha moment mm -hmm. and it's the whole fucking town here to beat the crap out of michael and like they shoot him they shoot him they stab him they beat him judy greer stabs him in the back of his neck and he just keeps he it's like a video game. he like sits up and keeps going it's like his like health bar does a second <laughs> refresh kind it does of. yeah yeah it's like you think you beat the boss but no it's because yeah they get him on the ground and then it's like oh is the movie over and judy greer's back at the michael michael house no it's like the Allison. end of hades a game that i just finished playing <laughs> and Thought I was done and I had escaped Hades and then a certain someone's health bar refreshed and then I cried. That's exactly <laughs> what happens here. Uh, yeah, so they're back at the house and then while they're chilling at the house with, and here's another thing about this movie is I think a lot of the dialogue is it's forced in a way to be uh, brought back because like earlier in the movie, Judy Greer tells Allison that even though Ray's dead, he'll always be with us, even if we can't see him. And then here at the end, Allison says that about Michael. She's mm. like, oh, he'll always be with us, huh? Even if we can't see him. I did notice with my third viewing, though, where Evil Dies Tonight comes from. It's because Tommy grabs the bat of the bartender, puts money in the tip bar, and he says, love lives today because on the tip jar it says love lives today so that's oh. like a little tip jar slogan and that's what he says he's like love lives today and then nurse chambers is like and evil dies tonight so it's a play on that oh, that just gets okay. taken up so yes it's repeated ad nauseum <laughs> but at least it does have a little bit sure, of an origin okay. to it yeah yeah anyway while they're sitting on the steps of the myers house michael gets up murders everyone uh, just everyone, Sheriff yeah. Brackett, Tommy, countless townspeople who are nameless. It's pretty fun to watch, honestly. It's just slitting throats just, and yeah, yeah, it's fucking them all up. And then for some reason, Judy Greer's like, "I want to go stand in that window." I want to know. I feel a magnetic pull to this window, I, which everyone does. It seems like yeah, you get into Jim that Cummings house. did it too. Yeah, and Michael McDonald was up there, <laughs> like at the same spot. Oh yeah, you just you get in there and you're like. I'll go look at that window. Gotta go look at that window. And then she does, and she gets killed by Michael. Yeah. <sighs> it <laughs> seems like he teleports. I know he probably doesn't. No, I, I'm i okay with him getting back up there unseen because oh, he uses yes. the back door. Yes, that's right. I remember last time I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I noticed this time that uh, Big John and Little John uh, one of them notices the back door is unlocked and they don't lock it again. It's mm -hmm. just left open. So yeah. he could have just gone through there. I assume that that's what I he did. I think that's since why. That's what, yeah. How he entered to kill them. And so after killing all the townspeople, I think he just entered through yeah, the back door. I think yeah, that's his door. It's a purposeful line. I think it's. Yeah. Clear. It's the Midwest. You go through the back door. It's true. <laughs> if you live in the Midwest, you do not use the front door of your house. <laughs> Fairly. Prove me wrong. <laughs> why? I don't know. I could not tell you. Growing up, we always went in through my garage. I use the side door. But yeah, which is a side, that was our side door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The attached garage. <laughs> but what a weird thing. I don't know. So yeah, he kills her and that's uh, how the movie ends. I guess they filmed Lori finding out about it, but it's going to be used in Halloween ends. Oh, okay. They filmed it and then they were like, well, with our ideas for how Halloween ends is going to be, it would make more sense to have in there probably as a flashback since yeah. it's going to take place years later. But yeah, so that's Halloween kills. Um, yeah, it's, there's stuff I like. There's stuff I don't like. I, I There's stuff I like a lot, and there's stuff I don't like a lot. Yeah. So it's, you know, some movies I feel pretty neutrally about. I can't even say this one's neutral except for just, like, they cancel it out. Yeah, it's like if you averaged mm -hmm. the opinions I have throughout the movie, it would end up being neutral, but I don't feel, like, neutral. It's like I just have complicated, weird feelings about it. That's why I don't, like, people ask if either of us are going to get letterboxed. I personally don't. It doesn't appeal to me because you rank, it's like one out of 
You don't have to do the number. Oh, you don't have you to? You can just write a little blurb. And that's mm, when I was told that, that, that I was feeling. like, then maybe. Maybe I next year. I don't like giving quantitative Yeah, people have asked anything. me several times to be like, at the end of a kill count, can you give it a rating out of 10? No. Because no. That, it's just, it, it's like too 10 reductive. On a ton, yeah, on a, like, 10 relative to what? Yeah. Like, what would I give spookies? Yeah, right. What would you give? <laughs> what do you yeah, give spookies? Like, what would you give sleepaway camp? Yeah. Like fucking 10 10 obviously but <laughs> i also would give something like citizen kane a ten. so it's like 10 in relation to what yeah you want our opinions listen to them we just told you and the other thing is that even if we see a new horror movie and we don't like it i want it to do well at the box office mm -hmm. i want every horror movie to succeed yeah because it's good for the genre and good for i mean obviously you guys know from watching this channel a horror movie it's kind of segregated from the rest of movie making you, that's why you see a lot of the same actors and filmmakers it's because we're all kind of like uh just put in our own little bubble and i want all those people to keep working so yeah. even if we didn't like spiral i want spiral to do well at the box office so that we get another chance at saw movies another chance at horror movies yeah etc like I, I don't want these movies to bomb even if we don't like them and the other thing is that maybe you do. Maybe you like them. Yeah. Like, we we had our issues with, like, Psycho Gorman. Lots of people fucking love that movie, and I'm so happy for them. So yeah, I wouldn't sure. want to, you know, if, if this movie had just come out and we did an episode, like, shitting all over it, I don't want someone who might enjoy it to be turned off from seeing it just yeah. because their opinion might not match with ours. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's all I got to all, say. That's all well said. Is or we're just fucking shills and sellouts and we we do stuff you know it, like either if we said we hated this everyone would be like wow they did a whole bunch of stuff for this and they said they hated it they're never gonna work with you like it's it's it there's no <laughs> winning it's fine um but yeah i mean even after all this i still am excited for the next one i yeah. want to know what's going on i want to see I wanna, that next i want to see how the fuck they wrap this up and also because it's the third one there can be actual, you know, <laughs> stakes, stakes yeah. and it feels like any anything can happen. Because mm -hmm. the second one, like you said, that's the problem with being like, we're doing two more movies. It's like, so Michael will survive yeah. the second movie. It's Maybe he won't survive ends, you know? Who knows? Maybe him and Lori will just blow up in a hospital together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they might, like, kill each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like, isn't that kind of what, I forget, what happens in H2O? Uh, H2O, she cuts his head off. Yeah. But in Resurrection, it's not his head. It's a paramedic. And then he comes after her in the hospital in the beginning of Resurrection. They're like fall off a yeah, building and they're Yeah, I was going to say they're hanging like there. hanging there. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, he stabs her and she falls. She dies. He's fine. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't quite he remember He has to go fight Buster Rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> I like that movie. It is funny that uh, it seems like every Halloween, it's like you get a great one and then a follow-up that's not great and someone's in the hospital. Because yeah. you got Halloween so and then true. Halloween 2, I, I'm not a huge fan of, and Lori's in the hospital. Halloween 3 is its own thing. Halloween 4 comes out. People tend to like that one. I think it's fine. Uh, and then Halloween 5 is an awful movie, and Danielle Harris is mostly in the hospital for it. Dude, ha it's because Michael kicks the shit out of the final girl and everything. Halloween 6 is its own kind of thing. Halloween H2O comes out. It's great. Halloween Resurrection is the follow-up. It's not good, and Lori's in the hospital in yeah. the beginning. And then this one, same thing. Like That's it's so nuts. weird. Yeah, uh, and Rob Zombie's even. Mm -hmm. uh, there you get the hospital scene in the second one, and that second one's a way worse movie than the first one. Even though I think the We Hate movie guys like the second Rob Zombie. I Halloween. think yeah, they. I I've seen a lot of people for some reason this year, like a lot of I think because Halloween Kills is a sequel, so a lot of people were talking about the Rob Zombie sequel. A lot of people it's getting reappraising some, it. I yeah. I kind of want to rewatch it. <sighs> Those movies are bleak though they're a lot yeah they're yeah. Really bleak. yeah i don't know it's also i think shot on 16 millimeters or something it's real no it's like a super 16 or something i think so it's super gritty and yeah. like grainy that's yeah holy fuck mm -hmm. like we shot on super 16 in film school yeah weird it's got that fucking white horse mom <laughs> yeah it's yeah so fucking weird huh. all righty right. well that's halloween kills yeah Next week, we have something so, so, so much fun for you all. James and I are doing a video just talking about Scream, the franchise, all of them, one through four, just a broad kind of conversation about what Scream is to us, um, the tropes, the characters, all of it. And we filmed it at 
Stu Mocker's house. Yeah. We had to spend the night at Stu's house, the house that the last half of Scream takes place in, the big like party at the end and the big, you know, fight showdown thing. It was so cool. It was awesome. It, like Paramount like set us up. Uh it was so much fun. They basically were just like, you have full run of the house, make whatever you want and so yeah, we did a podcast episode in the TV room, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is super cool. <laughs> and we dressed up in costume. Oh yeah. We'll have to see what that is next week. Also, merch is back. Merch is finally back. Holy shit. We uh so we're part of Rooster Teeth's podcast network. We have been for a few years. Um The Roots. The Roost. So they are helping us with our merch. So they got us all set. So that's gonna be at, and I'll put this in. Uh, I'll have this like up on the screen. I'll put it in the description, but it's a store.roosterteeth.com slash collection slash dead meat, dead hyphen meat. I'll put the link. In the description. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be there for you to click. Yeah. And right now it's uh, just a lot of logo stuff, but will we be able to add old favorites such as Final Girl? Yeah, right. this is like a very, like this is just some of the first stuff. We're going to put up all kinds I've of I've seen new... people wanting the title card back. Yeah. Business. Yeah. Uh, that... was the, that's nice. Yeah, I'll That's make nice. sure we'll, we'll have like a, a rollout of those. I just got to find old graphics and templates. Yeah, but there I are some find. new things there that have never been sold before, including a dead meat beanie. Yeah, I got That's hats new. and mugs and stickers. And one of the shirts is like a, a black and white tie dye. I like oh, that yeah. one a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool. So check that out. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys next week at Stu Mocker's house. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, you can follow us on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter, Instagram, and the talk. And I'm at Carebeck, C-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. Is that it? I think so. All right. So until next week, I'm Chelsea. And I'm James. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. <laughs>